Okay, so this is the fitting video for the MT82 Ford Land Rover Gearbox 2 M57 engine. So this covers M57 and M57 N and N2. It also covers the MT82 six speed gearbox from the Ford uh, and also from Land Rovers. It does also cover the five speed Ford gearbox fitted to Ford Transit as well. So this fitting video covers all of that. You'll use most of the parts here and any specific bits will go into detail through the video. If at any point you need any advice or you have any questions at all, please email us at info at synchrogearboxes.com. I'll stick the email in the comments to this video. We'll also stick the link to our website where you purchase this from uh, and you can get in touch with us at any point if you've got any technical questions or queries. If at any point you see anything in this video that's outside of your skill set or you haven't got the resources to, to carry out the work, I recommend that you stick everything back in the box and you either take it to somebody who can help you with that, i.e. a professional that carries out these conversions, or I would recommend sending the kit back to us and we'll issue you a full refund. Okay, so this is what's in the kit then. So obviously we've got the adapter itself or the adapter plate itself. We've got the starter motor cover. We've got the new clutch plate. So this is, this allows it to fit the BMW flywheel, but then with the, the Land Rover Ford center for the gearbox. We've got the new spigot bearing there. We've got the clutch release bearing spacer there for that's specifically for six speed only uh, but we'll talk more about that and then we've got a host of fasteners here uh, i won't talk about all of them but mostly the key ones are these countersunk bolts here so there's four of those um, that match up with the four countersunk holes countersunk bolts go in countersunk holes only um, that's pretty straightforward and there's a, a bunch of extra ones which are quite obvious when you come to fit in it. And you'll also need the fasteners from uh, the original gearbox as well. Okay, so first task then is obviously we've got the engine and the old gearbox off. And the first task is going to be removing the old clutch and flywheel, which is pretty straightforward stuff. You just want to undo the six bolts that go around the top of the clutch cover uh, and pull that off. Okay, so with them undone, the cover will fall off, as you know, and the plate has come with it. This flywheel is pretty knackered anyway, but it doesn't matter because it's getting swapped for a new one like yours. So then to remove that, we need to undo this ring of bolts here and pull it off the crank. There we go. So it just pulls straight off, leaving the good stuff. So at this point, you might want to change your crank sensor. You might want to change your crank seal. And then we're removing these two dowels, which are the two steel rings in these bottom two holes. So you need to remove those. And then we're going to keep the dust shield. So we're going to put that back on. And then after that, the blue adapter can go on loosely. So I've fitted the four countersunk bolts loosely. And then I've wound in the three smaller cap heads that go down in the sump and fitted them loosely as well. When you tighten these up, start with the two lower countersunk bolts, tighten those first, then the upper two, and then the lower three bolts uh, in the sump. Okay, so there's everything tightened up and looking good. So next, we need to open out the dust shield on this part of the hole here, and then drill out those two uh, main bolt holes. If you've got the earlier M57, then the dust shield will be in the correct place, so you can skip this step completely. So I'll just run the drill through them, just to go through the dust shield. And then using a die grinder, that's a carbide tip, I'm gonna reshape the hole so that the starter motor will fit back in. And then just literally just grind that bit of aluminium out so that the starter motor fits as it should. And then the next bit, we're just gonna cut out that bit of the dust shield there where the dowel goes. So now it's in a different position. So we're just gonna cut that out like I've done here, and that'll allow the dowel for the starter motor to be fitted. There you go, both bolt holes fit in, the dowel will go and uh, she fits in the hole with the dust shield as well. So the next job is putting in the spigot bearing. So that goes in the end of the crankshaft here and it sits flush with the end of the crankshaft. When you come to fit in this, do not hit it directly with a hammer. Use either a piece of wood or a proper bearing tool. 
So next job is to fit the new flywheel. So this is the new flywheel here. You need the correct flywheel, obviously. Either it's a replacement for your existing one, or if yours has a spigot bearing built into the flywheel, then it's the wrong flywheel and you need to get a different one that has a through hole like this. So next we need to bolt up the flywheel by using the new flywheel bolts that come with your new flywheel and torque them up to the specs that will be in there with your flywheel. Next on is the clutch. So this is the clutch kit here. So it's a BMW, standard BMW cover and then the plate is going to be the plate that comes in our kit. Now it might not look like this, in fact it definitely won't look like this because this was just a demo one so we could build it up. So your clutch plate that comes in the kit will look different. So just using a clutch alignment tool um, that we've got on the website that you can order as well, we're just going to fit the clutch plate and then drop the cover over the top. Um, so tightening this down, standard torque specs that will come with your flywheel probably in your clutch. So here's a shot of the clutch plate that'll actually come with the kit. We used to use a different type of clutch plate, uh, which is the one on the left, but uh, the one that will come in the kit is the one on the right now. So all assembled, the clutch alignment tool moves freely, so we know it's all aligned nicely, and we can get to bolting up the starter motor. So just want to check at this point that everything works as it should. So I've bolted up the starter motor temporarily, and I'm just going to run it up and make sure that there's nothing wrong, you know, that everything clears. I don't want to find out when, when all this is in the car that there's a minor issue that we need to address. So I've just thrown the starter motor on, and we're just going to check that it works. So I can see here just by spinning the starter motor up that, that the flywheel moves nicely. There's no odd noises and everything's running true. So it's all good. Nothing's catching, anything silly like that. And in fact, here's a quick shot of us running it up and the engine running. So everything's good there. Okay, so that's the engine side of things sorted out and the adapter and clutch and everything's all fitted, which is great. So next job now is to jump on the gearbox side of things. So I'm going to prep the gearbox to be fitted. The first job is to take a look at the input shaft uh, on the gearbox. So uh, I want to clean up the end of the input shaft where the spigot bearing runs, make sure it's smooth and there's no dents in it and basically file it and run a bit of emery cloth and stuff around it just to make sure it's all in good condition which will make life a ton easier when it goes to actually sliding this onto the engine. On this particular one the spigot bearing had failed and damaged the end of the input shaft so I've had to tidy it up quite a bit. I've put a chamfer on it with a grinder because it was all out of shape so we filed it all down so that now the spigot bearing will actually fit on there again. At the same time you want to clean up the splines and perhaps just put a little bit of grease on them at the same time and to swap out your release bearing. So this is a five speed box which has got uh, the manual type release bearing. So you want to swap out that for a, a new release bearing as well which will obviously be the release bearing that comes with the gearbox. So if it's a, a five speed it's a manual one, if it's a, a six speed it will come with a concentric slave cylinder. All right, so next job is sorting out the bell housing for the starter motor cover. So to do that, we're gonna take the adapter plate. So this is just another adapter plate that we're using to do this with. It's exactly the same as the blue one, but we're just using it for this starter motor job. So first up, we're gonna put the dowels, the gearbox dowels into the adapter, which will align the adapter with the gearbox when we put it on like this. And then you can see here at the starter motor hole that the starter motor, if you tried to fit the starter motor, it would foul on the bell housing. So we need to cut that part of the bell housing out so that it clears the starter motor. And then we've got this cover that goes over the top and um, basically to replace the, the part of the bell housing that's going to be missing and just cover the end of the starter motor neatly. So it's pretty straightforward. Obviously we need to, to cut that section of the bell housing out. So I've just by eye lined up the starter motor holes on the bell housing there and marked it out like so and then cut it out with the grinder. You don't have to cut it out with the grinder. You can, if you've got a different way of doing it, you can do, but we've just cut that out and, and basically just got it to the point where the starter motor cover fits like that. And there's a couple of ways you could do it. You could modify the starter motor cover if you wanted to and leave the gearbox um, slightly more intact, or you could do what we've done here and just cut it out so that it clears the starter motor cover completely. At that point, you could actually weld the starter motor cover to the bell housing so it then effectively becomes part of the bell housing um, or you could just leave it as we've left it in this video. 
So the starter motor cover has the holes threaded, uh, as you can see here. And we decided to give to do that to give you the option of which way you wanted to bolt the starter motor. So conventionally in the BMW, the the bolts go from the rear into the starter motor. So the th starter motor holes themselves are threaded. Um, and because this this kit will go in a bunch of different applications, we threaded these holes, and, which means that you can have the choice whether to put the bolts in from the front or from the back. Um, so on this application, actually, we're going to bolt them from the back into the starter motor as they normally would be, which means we're going to drill out the threads in this starter cover. In other applications where you can't get to the back of the bell housing in the car because the bulkhead's in the way, for example, then uh, it would be a good option to drill the threads out the starter motor and put the bolt in from the front. Okay, so at this point I'm putting the gearbox on and I've shoved it all the way on without the dowels, basically to ensure that it that it does go on fully. What you don't want to do is be putting the gearbox on and then pulling the gearbox onto the adapter or onto the engine. With the bolts, it should push on freely itself. Obviously, you will have a little bit of resistance from the clutch slave, um, particularly on the six speeds, but it should push on freely with the dowels out. So here you could just run a bead of sealant uh, and then make your own cover for the old cam, uh, the old crank sensor hole and the old starter motor hole, uh, or you could weld the new cover onto the bell housing, as I mentioned. So on this hole here, which is on the left-hand side of the gearbox, you might find that the through hole is blank and that's because the sump is behind the adapter plate and there's no hole in the sump. All you need to do is run a drill bit through there, which is easier with the gearbox off, and uh, then you'll be able to put a nut and bolt through. So the next bit of gearbox prep is fitting the clutch lathe bearing shim. So this literally places over the end of the clutch release bearing. This is only for six speed MT82 gearboxes with the concentric slave cylinder like we've got here. If yours doesn't look like this and it's a manual clutch, then you don't have to do this step. But if it does, you do. Obviously your slave cylinder will be in your bell housing, so it just drops over the end of the slave. And then it's just a case now of putting the dowels in, the gearbox dowels back in and offering the gearbox up, putting on all the bolts and tightening them down. And there you go, you can see the gearbox bolted up. As I say, you could weld on that starter cover uh, or just run some sealant over it if you wanted to and then knock up some covers to go over the old starter motor hole and uh, on the other side there was the crank sensor hole. If at any point you need any advice or you have any questions at all, please email us at info at synchrogearboxes.com uh, and you can get in touch with us at any point if you've got any technical questions or queries. If at any point you see anything in this video that's outside of your skill set or you haven't got the resources to, to carry out the work, I recommend that you stick everything back in the box and you either take it to somebody who can help you with that, i.e. a professional that carries out these conversions, or I would recommend sending the kit back to us and we'll issue you a full refund.